Hello everyone, welcome to the Lang Focus channel and my name is Paul. Today we're going to examine the differences between two sister languages, Indonesian, also known as Bahasa Indonesia, and Malay, also known as Bahasa Melayu. Selamat datang di Indonesia. Welcome in Indonesia. Selamat datang ke Malaysia. Welcome to Malaysia. As you can see, at first glance the two languages seem essentially the same, and their standard varieties are in large part mutually intelligible. But you can also see that they're not exactly the same. If you've seen my individual videos on Indonesian and Malay, then you know how this came about. But to briefly recap, before the present-day countries of Indonesia, Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore existed, Malay was spoken throughout the area and had been a lingua franca for centuries. But in 1928, the Indonesian nationalist movement that wanted to gain independence from the Dutch chose Malay as the national language of their future country and renamed it to Indonesian, or Bahasa Indonesia, while Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore retained the name Malay. While the standard form of Indonesian and the standard form of Malay are both based on the same Johor Diao Malay, they have incorporated different influences, and since 1928 they have moved in different directions to a certain extent. It seems to me that because it was renamed Bahasa Indonesia, the Indonesian variety was set apart from the standard Malay used in other countries and given a new identity, which allowed it to diverge more freely. Today, while standard Indonesian and standard Malay are still nearly identical in terms of grammar, there are significant differences in vocabulary. I've seen casual estimates that in terms of vocabulary they are 90% the same and 10% different, and that seems reasonable to me. There are also some differences in pronunciation and spelling. Malay used to only be written in a modified Arabic script called Jawi, but it began to be written with Roman characters during the colonial period. Originally, the system of Romanizing Malay in Malaysia, Brunei, and Singapore was influenced by English, since they were formerly under British control, while in Indonesia it was influenced by Dutch, since Indonesia was formerly under Dutch control. For example, the word for grandchild Chuchu. was spelled like this in Malaysia and like this in Indonesia. But in 1972, there was a spelling reform that eliminated most differences like that. But different influences of English on Malay and Dutch on Indonesian remain, mainly in the presence of loanwords. Sometimes a Dutch loanword is used in Indonesian when an older Malay word is used in Malay. For example, the word for office. In Indonesian, it's Kantor. In Malay, it's Pajabat. In Indonesian, Pajabat means an official rather than an office. The word for room. In Indonesian, Kamar. In Malay, it's Bilik. Bilik is still used in Indonesian, but means a small room, like a booth or compartment. Related to that is the word for toilet or restroom. In Indonesian, the most common word is probably Kamar kecil, which literally means small room. In Malay, the most common words are Tandas and Bile ai, which is sort of a loan translation of water closet or WC. Sometimes an English loan word is used in Malay, while an older Malay word is used in Indonesian. The word for hospital. In Indonesian, it's rumah sakit, which literally means sick house. And while both of the words are Malay, this phrase is a loan translation of Dutch, ziekenhuis. In Malay, they simply say hospital. Rumah sakit used to be used in Malay, but is hardly used anymore, except maybe in some regional dialects. Oftentimes, a Dutch loan word is used in Indonesian, while an English loan word is used in Malay. These words are often cognates, but have different spelling and pronunciation. For example, the word for television. In Indonesian, it's Televisi. While in Malay, it's Television. The word for police. In Indonesian, it's Polisi. While in Malay, it's Polis. In Indonesian, Polis means policy, as in an insurance policy. The word for university. Universitas. University. But sometimes they're not cognates. The word for bag. In Indonesian, tas, which comes from Dutch. And in Malay, bag. The word for petrol or gasoline, bensin, petrol. The word for pharmacy, meaning the place where medicines are sold, apotek, farmasi. In Indonesian, the word farmasi is used to refer to the pharmaceutical profession and industry, but not to shops. There were some different colonial influences as well. For example, the word for towel. In Indonesian, Handuk. From Dutch, Handuk. 
In Malay, it's toala, which comes from the Portuguese word toalha. There are numerous words from Portuguese in both Malay and Indonesian, because Malacca, in present-day Malaysia, was a Portuguese colony for over a hundred years. Another example is the word sapato, meaning shoe, which comes from Portuguese sapato. Sapato is the usual word for shoe in Indonesian, but in Malay it's not used much anymore, and the word kasut is used instead, especially by young people. Putting aside colonial vocabulary in particular and looking at vocabulary in general, it's fair to say that the words that are different in Indonesian and Malay are often very basic and common words. The word for tree, pohon, poko. The word for car, mobil. This is another word from Dutch and is short for automobile. In Malay, it's kereta. In Indonesian, kereta means train and is short for kereta api. And that's the same as the Malay word for train. Kereta api. Kereta api literally means fire wagon, with wagon being the original sense of kereta before it meant car. Notice the Malay pronunciation of kereta. Kereta. Final a is usually pronounced as a schwa in Malay, at least in Malaysia. A couple more examples: saya, meaning I, is pronounced saya, and pertama, meaning first, is pronounced pertama. City. Kota. Banda. In Malay, the word kota is also used with the meaning of city, but it's used more like that in writing, and the word's often used with the sense of a fort. In Indonesian, bandar is usually a port or a water channel rather than a city. Notice that the final r is silent in many Malay accents, including the mainstream Johor, Riau, Selangor Malay. This is also the case in some Indonesian accents, but more so among Malay accents. Bicycle, sepeda, from velosiped. The popular name of early bicycle-like vehicles during the colonial period. In Malay, it's basikal, and related to those words are the words for motorcycle, sepeda motor, motosikal. Some terms of address and family vocabulary are different. In Indonesian, bapa or pa are used to respectfully address a man, like sir. In Malay, it's tuan. Tuan is also used in Indonesian, but it's very formal. Similarly, in Indonesian, ibu or bu are used to mean ma'am. In Malay, the word is puan. This word does exist in Indonesian, but is a formal literary word and is not commonly used. Bapa literally means father, and ibu literally means mother, and with those meanings, they are used in Malay. In Indonesian, grandfather is kakek, while in Malay, it's usually datuk. In Malay, kaka means older sister. But in Indonesian, kaka means older sibling. Older brother is kaka laki laki, and older sister is kaka perempuan. Not only nouns, but some verbs are different. The verb meaning can or be able to in Indonesian it's bisa. In Malay it's boleh. Boleh is used in Indonesian with the meaning of may, as in you have permission to do something. But in Malay, boleh is used with both meanings. Bisa comes from Javanese, the most widely spoken native language in Indonesia. A significant number of Javanese words have entered Indonesian, but not Malay. I should note that there's a different word, bisa, in both Malay and Indonesian that means poison or venom. The verb meaning to return. Kembali. Bali. Kembali is also used, but more in writing. In many cases, both words exist as synonyms in either language, but there's a difference in frequency of word choice. Take a look at this sentence here. This means I want to eat something. In Indonesian, it's saya mau makan sesuatu. In Malay, it's saya nak makan sesuatu. The verb meaning to want is different. In Indonesian, mau is probably the most common word. In Malay, henda is more common. And in casual speech, it's often abbreviated to na. Henda is also used in Indonesian, but less often. And mau is also used in Malay, but less frequently. Another sentence. This means I always wake up after nine o'clock. In Indonesian, saya selalu bangun setelah jam sembilan. In Malay, saya sentiasa bangun selepas jam sembilan. Word for word, both sentences are I always wake up after hour nine. In Malay, sentiasa is often used for always, though selalu is also common in casual speech. In Indonesian, selalu is the most common word. Sentiasa is rare, but its longer form, senantiasa. Is used in more formal situations, and the most common word for after in this context in Indonesian is setelah, and in Malay selepas. Some words here and there are spelled a little differently. 
One of the words meaning to want in Indonesian is mau, as we saw before. In Malay, it's mahu, mau. The word for different in Indonesian is beda. While in Malay, it's beze. The word for try in Indonesian is coba. While in Malay, it's coba. The word for healthy is sehat in Indonesian, while it's sihat in Malay. So far, I've mainly been focusing on standard Indonesian and standard Malay, which are in large part the same, except for some differences in vocabulary and vocabulary usage. But in casual speech, the differences can be much greater. There are numerous regional and local dialects of Malay, and even though Indonesian is learned as a second language by most Indonesians, it has developed various local varieties influenced by regional languages of Indonesia. Me and her went to the shop to buy some food, then we ate together. First, let's compare the standard sentences. In standard Indonesian, Aku dan dia pergi ke toko untuk membeli makanan. Kemudian, kami makan bersama. And now in standard Malay, Aku dan dia pergi ke kedai untuk membeli makanan. Kemudian, kami makan bersama. Word for word, both sentences are I and she go to store for buy food, then we eat together. So you can see that these sentences are almost identical. There's just one main difference. The most common words for store or shop are different in Malay and Indonesian. In Indonesian, it's toko, while in Malay, it's kadai. In Indonesian, kadai is sometimes used, but for a small, simple shop like a food stand or kiosk. In Malay, kadai is used more generally for most shops. But let's take a look at how this might be said in casual speech. First, in the casual Indonesian of Jakarta. Gue sama dia jalan ke toko buat beli makanan. Terus, kita makan bareng. The first word, gue, is a pronoun originally from Hokkien Chinese that entered casual Jakartan speech through Batawi, which is spoken by the original Batawi inhabitants of Jakarta. The next word, ama, is a shortened version of sama, which means same or together. But here it means and. Jalan means walk rather than go. This is simply a matter of word choice. The word buat is used instead of untuk, which means for, or for the purpose of. In standard Indonesian and Malay, buat means do or make. But in the casual speech of Jakarta, it also means for or for the purpose of. Next, the verb beli, meaning to buy, is used in its root form with no affixes. Next, the word trus is used to mean then. This is a standard word, but is used more in colloquial speech, while in more standard speech, kemudian might be used. Next, we see the pronoun kita. In the standard sentence, the pronoun kami is used which means we, excluding the listener. There is also the pronoun kita, which means we, including the listener. In casual Jakarta speech, the distinction between kami and kita is usually ignored and kita is used, unless there's a reason to emphasize that the listener is excluded, in which case kami can be used. Barang means with or together with, and this word comes from Javanese. Now let's look at a similar sentence, but in the dialect of Johor Diao Salangor, where Kuala Lumpur is located. Aku ngan dia gigi kedai nak beli makanan sikit. Lepas tu kita orang makan sama-sama. Ngan is a short form of dengan, which means with. But here it means and. Dia would be dia in standard speech. Gi is a short form of the verb pergi, which means go. Next we see nak, which means want, but here it's used to mean with the intention of. Next again we see beli, with no affixes. And here, skit is a shortened form of sedikit, which means a little. But here it doesn't really mean a little in terms of amount. It's just used to have a softening effect on the sentence. Pastu means then, and is a shortened form of selepasitu, meaning after that. Kitorang comes from kita plus orang. In the casual Malay of Kuala Lumpur and its surrounding regions, kitorang is the casual pronoun meaning kami, which means we, excluding the listener. Sama-sama equals sama-sama or sama, but without the prefix ber. Again, notice the final schwa vowel on dia and sama-sama. One more sentence. I invited him to play football with us. First, the standard sentences. In standard Indonesian, Saya mengundangnya untuk bermain sepak bola dengan kami. And in standard Malay, Saya menjemputnya untuk bermain bola sepak dengan kami. Word for word it's, I invite him for play football with us. In their standard forms, these sentences are quite similar, but we can see a couple of differences. In Indonesian, a common verb meaning invite is mengundang, while in Malay it's menjumput. In Indonesian, menjumput means to pick up, like to pick someone up at the airport. Second is the term for football, 
in Indonesian it's sepak bola, which literally means kick ball. And in Malay it's bola sepak, which literally means ball kick. Now let's check out the casual forms of this sentence. Gue ngundang dia buat main bola sama kita. Notice here that the word mengundang is shortened to ngundang. In casual speech, the suffix meng is often shortened to ng. Here again we see buat in place of the standard word untuk, meaning four or two. Notice that the verb main appears in its root form without the prefix that it has in standard speech. Next, spak bola is simply bola. Ama comes from sama, as we saw before. And again, kita, rather than kami. Aku ajak dia nak main bola dengan kita orang. Notice there's a different verb ajak, meaning to invite, which is also used in Indonesian. Menjemput is more formal than ajak. Ajak is used in its root form. Note that nak seems to be used in place of untuk, just like bua in Indonesian. And just like in casual Indonesian, we see main in its root form with no prefix. Again, we see ngan, the shortened form of dengan, and again we see kitorang instead of the standard word kami. As you can see, Malay and Indonesian are very similar languages, especially in their standard forms, which are used in formal and polite situations. They're arguably two standard varieties of the same language, Malay, rather than two separate languages. They only really become undeniably different when we look at their casual forms, which differ from region to region. But it's worth pointing out that these casual forms don't only differ between countries, they differ within each country as well. So that begs the question, is there really a distinction between casual Malay and casual Indonesian? Or is there simply a distinction between all of the different regional dialects, regardless of whether they're Malay or Indonesian? It seems to me that speakers of both Malay and Indonesian learn to understand other casual varieties through exposure, and through exposure to casual varieties of the other language, they would probably learn to understand them as well as casual varieties of their own language. So I think it makes sense to consider Malay and Indonesian a single pluricentric language with basically two standard varieties and a variety of different dialects. But that's just my humble opinion. What do you think? The question of the day. For speakers of either language, Malay or Indonesian, do you consider standard Malay and standard Indonesian to be varieties of the same language? How about their casual forms? And for other people, what's your impression of Malay and Indonesian? Do they seem like different languages to you? If you enjoyed this video, check out the different Langfocus social media accounts like Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. And as always, I'd like to say a special thanks to all of my Patreon supporters for their generous monthly pledges, especially these wonderful people right here on the screen, my top tier Patreon supporters. Many special thanks to them. And to everyone, thank you for watching and have a nice day.